And I simply can use it and uh, switch back to this single page uh, later. Okay, so that's uh, what we saw uh, about implementing a web service. Um, what I'm going to show you uh, in, a, in a few steps here is how to use a web service based on JSON. Um, we um, looked around and uh, we found a, a web service uh, using um, at geonames.org, uh, and it's a web service to, to work with um, postal codes and, and uh, get back uh, some city names, country codes, postal codes, and names. Uh, and we can use this web service uh, for validation of address data in Folio, for example, or something else. Yeah? Uh, and uh, what we see here is the XML variant of this web service, and I can pass in here. Uh, I want to use not the XML variant, but the JSON variant. Uh, and I get the same uh, data back, uh, format is JSON, and the browser doesn't have this support, so it doesn't look so nice. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I get the same data, and it's very easy to work with this data uh, in Folio. Uh, I just implemented a, as, a, as a use case test here. So if I run the test, um, we can see the test is going on. What, what's the test about? It's going to search for all uh, about contacts I can read. Uh, and for each contact, it's going to read the address of the contact, uh, and then it's, use the, it's using the address, the address zip code of this contact uh, to receive the data we already saw, and then it validates um, whether this, the, the place name matches the, the place name in Folio. And if it doesn't match, uh, we're going to raise an error and say, okay, uh, it doesn't, this doesn't work, and uh, there is some, and we will show the, the failed code, the failed city, and the failed uh, Postal codes. Okay, in this case, it failed. Yeah, it said uh, the address information for our contact Martin Landl uh, is wrong. The city link does not match the zip code 4040, and possibilities for zip code 4040 are lints, and then there are some uh, foreign uh, foreign country codes. Uh, I didn't uh, consider the language in this sample here, but it doesn't matter anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, the address is wrong. Okay, so I, I'm going to fix this right now. I go here to my contacts, and we see, okay, Andal Martin, uh, and I edit his address. I'm editing his address details, and there was a typo in here. Should should read lints. Uh, I, I commit this, go back, rerun our test, And uh, same code is running, and this time it passed. So um, what I want to show you here is it's really easy to read the JSON request, that's the line here, and transform the JSON request into um, a kind of nested data structure, uh, which can easily be combined with the rest of the, the built-in AppDux language of Fabersoft Folio. OK, that's uh, the JSON sample I wanted to show you. It's really easy, uh, and especially if you're uh, used to work with uh, SOAP web services. This is a refreshing new way uh, to, do, uh, to do integration with web services, especially in the browser. The next story I'm going, we're going to talk about is uh, a compliance archive, um, where we are already have our compliance archive, and we can, um, we can um, archive our objects uh, to various archiving, external archiving systems. Uh, including uh, our own file-based uh, solution. And there is a customer complaint saying, uh, why do we uh, create a single file per object in the archive? Uh, if this, um, if the, the projects consist of very many objects, it takes much too much time uh, to do the archiving of this com complex and big project. Uh, so um, we will see the innovations here. Uh, the Scrum Master of Abyssal Folio, host writer, will show it to us. Archive storage is uh, different than online storage. Uh, there are different requirements. Uh, for one, usually, the way you use archive storage is you write once and you read uh, many, 
So you write your data once, and then it's read only, and uh, the only requirement is that it's, it lasts for, for a very long time, for the lifetime of the, the archiving service. But of course, uh, uh, you read it uh, as part of the archiving use cases uh, several times after that. And uh, these requirements, the, the requirement for long-term storage and for uh, a safe storage uh, in respect to archiving, uh, make archiving systems different in, in respect to the performance characteristics. Usually an archiving system, or the, the storage behind it is, is uh, magnitudes of times slower than online storage. And in, when it comes to files of folio, for example, the question is how can you still uh, optimize the archiving process or how can you optimize individual steps uh, in respect to archiving at all? I'd like to give you a specific example. Let's uh, switch to the user here. We have a user who manages uh, projects. And one of these projects, uh, a Files of Tulio case object, uh, contains uh, several um, contracts. And the user manages these contracts. And at some point, the project is uh, completed. And the user uh, might think about archiving that object because uh, the uh, it's not uh, likely that the object will be modified uh, soon. So it's eligible for archiving. The question is what happens when we archive such a, a list of objects? Uh, in previous versions, um, the process was uh, creating several um, elements, several items in the archive, one item per object. One item contains the whole metadata of the whole set of properties of this object. So we would get one uh, item per um, contract and, of course, one item for the, for the root object, uh, the project. In respect to archiving storage, it's not ideal because every entry, uh, entry has a, a very significant overhead. It has to be created. Creating uh, writing to the storage is, uh, is not really efficient in respect to performance. And reading uh, is equally inefficient in contrast to online storage because you have to find the entry and you have to retrieve the data. So if we somehow manage to reduce that input, we can optimize the whole archiving ex experience for the user. And that's exactly what we did with Power Folio um, summer release. We simply uh, tried to minimize the input by combining the whole uh, set, of, uh, set of objects to a single package that contains all these uh, properties. Uh, in this specific case, we have uh, these objects, and all of these objects will form a package that is sent to the archive. I can start the archiving process now. I select the object, and in the archive menu, I simply archive the object, which causes all related objects to be archived. Uh, now that uh, the archive or the object model itself knows which objects are related to each other, we can uh, make use of that uh, relationship and only send this single package. And what I have here is a file system uh, archive, and I will show you now how we uh, send this very package to the archiving system. The file system archive is, of course, based on a standard file system with, with files in this case. We have an XML structure that contains properties and individual objects. But rather than creating several XMLs per object, we only have a single one. And I'd like to show you the, the structure so that you can see how it's actually um, working. So we have one root node, which represents the list of objects, and then one uh, element per object, in this case, uh, one such element uh, represents a uh, contract, for example. Here we see uh, the object name of the contract. By doing so, we simply eliminate all of the, uh, the items which would normally be created and only uh, create one and therefore optimize the performance and the time the user has to wait for the whole process to finish. So in your solution, you can also take advantage of that. You simply have to define the relationship between your objects uh, in your object model, and I will show you how, what you have to do to, to define that. We switch to the, the admin view. Here we have uh, the case object class, and we take a look at uh, the property we saw before, the documents property, which contains 
the, uh, the um, contract. And in this property, we have uh, a set of actions. And there's a predefined uh, a property which defines the action for archiving an object. And uh, when you use a specific action, you can include all objects that are contained in this very property. And that's, this, um, that's this particular action, which uh, actually uh, includes all the objects contained in the property as part of the archiving process. So all you have to do is uh, set that action in this uh, property here, and you automatically take advantage of the new functionality. Thank you. The last point uh, we're going to show are our supported platforms, innovations in our supported platforms. Uh, Key question is here, when will our graphic designers, uh, our graphic department be able to work with Fabus of Folio? And how can I use my tablet, especially my iPad or Android device? Uh, Scrum Master Martin Osanger will show this to us. Now you can use Fabus of Folio on Mac OS as comfortable as on Windows. And now I will show you an example. I'm logged in as David Porter and I stored my templates on the file system before the Firesoft Folio summer release. I can now import this folder structure with my templates in it and put it directly into Firesoft Folio. As we see here, the whole folder structure was imported. So now I have to change the invitation uh, for Firesoft Done. I can now change the content of this object only via a double click. The document opens, and I can insert the right subject. And change the date. After I close the document and save it, the uh, changes will be written to Fibersoft Folio. On the next day, I want to know what I have changed yesterday. I only click on versions, show content modifications, and then on compare documents, and I will see the whole changes I have made. I now have to insert the mail merge properties. For this, I need my customers in the document. I click on properties and add the addresses via uh, address C list. And last but not least, I have to mark this document as a mail merge document. If I open it now, I have the mail merge fields available and I can put it into the document via drag and drop and view a preview of my data source. I'm now finished with the template, and I can now send it to my boss to review it.
I only have to click on send, and the default mail client opened. And I can send it to review. I'm often on business trips, and I don't want to take my Mac always with me. For this, I have a smaller version of my Mac, so-called iPad. The problem is that my iPad only supports wireless LAN, and so I need a wireless LAN connection to get access to my important documents. But with the new Firesoft Folio app, you can access your documents without an internet connection. I'm here also logged in as David Porter, and I'm now online. So I can step through all my folders. The connection is a little bit slow in the moment. Let's restart the application. This scene should be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> Oben war es noch gegangen. Das ist schon Daniel gewohnt. <lacht> ah, beim dritten Versuch oder so geht es meistens. So. Farbe M. Hm. Ja, dann hat es der Daniel noch nicht. So. Das mir jetzt gar nicht. Also, vorgeht. Vorgeht, da kannst du in Ruhe wieder herrichten. Okay. Ja. Jetzt geht's. Cool. Also, wir öffnen mal das Ding. Cool. Zack. We are now logged in as David Porter. We can step our documents but the thing uh, what we want to do is we want to synchronize all our important data to our local storage so we can access all documents without any connection to the internet what we have to do to synchronize the data. We only have to click on the icon next to the folder, and then the files, uh, what will be downloaded, will be cal calculated. Then we start the synchronization, and after a short time, all files are stored locally. We can minimize that 
and we will see uh, progress on the left side. If we now switch uh, in the offline mode, we will see that all items which are not synchronized are grayed out, and all items which are synchronized are highlighted with its colors. And we co can step now through our documents and open, for example, the Filesoft Folio folder. We can now increase the size of the picture uh, of the document and read through the uh, paper. This app is also available for Android. I will show you now the Fabers of Folio app on an Acer tablet device. Here it has a similar picture of the desktop of David Porter. On the left side of a line, we also have the synchronize button. If we press the synchronize button, all files are calculated for downloading and will be shown on the bottom right side. If we now click on yes, all files will also be downloaded and then we can access them without any connection. So the download is still in progress. We have to wait a little bit. So the favorites folder is now offline available and we can switch into the offline mode and we will see that all items which are not synchronized are also grayed out and we can, can't access these items. We can only access the items which we are synchronized before. And now we can choose also our documents we want to read in case of Android, we uh, have to choose the application with uh, which we want to open our file. In my case, I want to open it with Adobe Reader. And I can now watch the document and read through it. The Fabsoft Full App not only works on the Acer tablet, it works on many un other Android devices too. Thank you. Uh, great news. Um, I think a lot of uh, people will like uh, the support for Android. Okay. Follow us on our um, social networks. Uh, we have uh, our account on Twitter, our stream on Twitter. Uh, you can join us on Facebook, uh, and we have the blog at fabersoftfolio.com. What did we demonstrate to you in this um, presentation? We showed our innovative and easy-to-use interface, um, the innovations there, how easy it is to, to work with lists. Uh, we showed how to... Uh, easily adjust our features to your project's needs uh, and, and how um, you can make your projects better with our product. 
Uh, Fabrizot Folio is the ECM product for your requirements. Uh, we get stronger with your requirements. Thank you.